Good evening, sports fans, and welcome to Lakeside Junior High for our first game of the season. It's Jamie Stallings. Van Steumann's downstairs getting ready to announce the teams. He's going to be joining us in just a minute. We want to welcome you here tonight to the Hartzell Jones Gymnasium. We're going to start with the Lakeside Junior High girls here in about 20 minutes, followed by the Lakeside Junior High boys playing the Prairie Grove Tigers. Stay with us. We're excited you're here.
Good evening, sports fans, and welcome to the Hartzell Jones Gymnasium. Jamie Stallings here with you. We are excited to be joined by Van Suman, and we're excited to kick off this basketball season. It's a good season. Lakeside, the girls still have... They've lost a lot from their regional runner-up team last year, but they are led by point guard Sanaya Coachman. Um, if you remember as a seventh grader, she was – she developed into probably their best player um, at the end. Uh, really grew. I know Coach Carter has said that she has matured a lot as a, as a player and as a, as a person, you know, just going from seventh to eighth grade. Um, she's grown a lot. We're excited to see what she looks like. And they've got some newcomers coming up. Lamaya Martin. Uh, Esther Lobwich, I think, is starting. Angel Kumtok. I know Coach Carter said Esther Kumtok, or uh, Angel Kumtok has worked exceptionally hard this year, um, put in the work in the off season to get better. We're excited to see what they bring to the table this year. We're about five minutes from the start of the game, the opening game of the season. So stick right here with us here on the Lakeside Golden Eagle Sports Network.
thanks for joining us here on the Lakeside Golden Eagle Sports Network. We've got starting lineup for Prairie Grove, number 14, Brule. Number 21, McKinney Unkley. Number 25, Peyton Smash. Number 22, Natalie Medeiros. And number 24, Peyton Dugan. The Lady Tigers are coached by Rachel Hart. And now the starting lineup for your Lakeside Golden Eagles. Number eight, small forward, Marissa Brown. At guard, number 12, Tanina, Tina Kanoko. Point guard, number 23, Sanaya Coachman. Guard, number 24, Esther Lobwig. And at forward, number 34, Angel Kumtak. They are coached by Jazz Carter. This is Coach Carter's fourth or fifth year here at Lakeside. I think five. And she has had quite a bit of success with the girls, particularly last year, Charlene and Sanaya. Sanaya is the only starter returning. Sanaya and Marissa both got significant time last year. Starter Sanaya was one of the stars of that program. Sanaya is going to take the tip. Let's get started with the first game of the season. It's great to be in a gym, getting ready for some fall weather. Sanaya wins the tip off. Esther brings it down. Sanaya is going to take it out. She's at the top. Goes for three, off the rim. Prairie Grove rebounds, brings it back out. Golden Eagles are known for their press. They had a particularly aggressive defense. Marissa with the coverage. Prairie Grove steps out to start, and that's the first turnover of the game. And Lakeside scores. I believe that was Sanaya Coachman with the two. That defense is stifling. 21 has it at the top. Out to the side, we've got a travel second turnover. For Prairie Grove. Marissa Brown's going to take it out. Sanaya's going to bring it down. Sanaya takes her time. And loses the ball as she drives to the bucket. But it goes off a Prairie Grove player. Sanaya takes it out. Sanaya in the side for three, and it's good. Great shot by Sanaya. Sanaya has all five of their points and is working the press. I think we've got a foul. I looked away real quick. That was a foul. Sanaya with a steal. Drives down. And she's up. In and out. Happy to be joined by Van Stuman, the man that actually knows what he's talking about and has a good voice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now I'm, I'm exhausted after climbing the steps now. I do see we have a 5 to nothing lead here. We do. Sanaya's been doing work. Well, standing there at the free throw line with two shots, Prairie Groves, number 25, Peyton Spatz. And I'm kind of out of touch with what's happened the last four and a half. It's kind of been the two, Sanaya two Coachman show, Van. Uh, you know, it was a little bit last year at times, but Sanaya is the star of this show. She's definitely the best player on the team. Well, she'll be the best player in the gym most, most places they go this yeah. year. And uh, she's uh, just an eighth grader, 
but probably playing her last season here at Lakeside as she's going to definitely be good enough as a freshman to play to play up for the high school. Both teams opening the season, and, you know, you open the season, you don't really know what you have. Sanaya with a nice cross court or pass down court. Tina Kaneko can't quite handle it, though. Turns <laughs> it back over to Prairie Grove. You never know how good you are when you start the season or how bad you are. Nah, you have no idea. Let's hope Kid brings it out. I know Coach Carter knows she's lost a lot, but uh, has some high expect expectations for some of these newcomers. She does bring back Marissa and Sanaya. Uh, Marissa was a great role player last year. You see them with the defense right there. She hustles hard. She does good work. She's got a decent shot. Well, the but Golden Eagles are going to bring the pressure, and that's always something that's very uh, – it's usually successful early in the season when teams haven't had a lot of time to work yet. Nice Angel job. Angel gets the shot. Great Sanaya job, Angel. dumps it inside there to Marissa, who pitches it off to April Kumtok, who knocks it down 7 to nothing. With a smothering defense, Esther Lobwich with the steal goes for the layup, thinks about it. Lakeside retains the ball. Good work by Esther, and we are going to have a sub here in just a second. If the sub can remember to take her shirt off, <laughs> her warm-up off, excuse me. That's going to be number 15, Olivia Cannon, that's coming in. She's going to replace Esther. Esther just got that ball knocked away there. She she had it in a good position to get a nice, easy shot. But it goes in. Tina Kaneko's got it in the corner. Out to Sanai at the top. Drives in. Marissa with a screen. Nice little scoop. Didn't go. Marissa's fighting for that rebound. No, she's got it. Olivia Cannon with the three. But Angel puts it back in. Nice Angel job like right a there. boss. Angel did a great job. When she got that rebound, she kept the ball up at its highest point. She didn't bring it down. And what you see with a lot of young players, they'll get that rebound, bring it down, and by the time they recover and get it off, they got defense there in their face. She kept her hands up, went right back up. And that's that an end beautiful. one for Angel. Angel misses off the, the back of the rim. Sanaya with a rebound. Marissa tries to drive in, gets into traffic, immediately recovers to defense. Nice move down there by Peyton Spatz. I thought she drug her pivot foot a little bit. She got it. She got she definitely got down there, got the shot off, and she got fouled. And one for Spats. I didn't see who that foul got called on, did you? He was signaling, and I couldn't tell if it was 23 or 34. We're going to hope it was 34. Not that it matters since they have almost they have all the points right now for Lakeside. Sanaya at the top. Drives into Angel, tries the hook. Golden Eagles get back. Looks like they're 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 pressing after made shots, getting back on defense on a on a miss. Sanaya with blocking the three there, and there's a fight for it. It's going to be a jump ball. Lamaya Martin's coming in. Sanaya is not going out. Angel's going out. Lamaya Martin is in. Nine to two, about two, two minutes, 40 seconds left. Jump ball, Marissa Brown. She is a gritty player. Yeah, Marissa, she's, she's going to work hard. You're going to see her on the floor a lot. Sanaya is going to bring it down. Taking her time. Rare Grove is going to let her. Tina goes from the top, in and out. Rebound by Spatz. Sanaya with the press. And that's hey, Hope Kid. Uh, 
It's another two points by Prairie Grove. I didn't see who made it, but scores now nine to four as Sanaya brings it out. Sanaya works inside. Just misses. Hustles back on defense with the steal, but it's off of her. We got a timeout. Now oh, we got substitutions. It's number five, Luther Combs coming in. This kid brings it up. Down the other way, the other way. Not the super aggressive press that we've seen. Get a whistle. Can't blow your back out with the We got a travel. And if it wouldn't have been a travel, it would have been a jump ball. Marissa doing work. was as, as good last year as the Golden Eagles were and kind of getting hot, you know, hitting some big shots. Uh, really, the basis of it all was the defense. You know, they had some length, good athletes, and made it hard on the other team. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what you're seeing tonight, too. Yeah, I mean, they're at, their, at the core, and I think what Coach Carter wants their, uh, wants their identity to be is just kind of a hard-working, gritty, blue-collar team. Marissa Brown's going to get her chance at the line. Got a former Lakeside celebrity here. Mr. Kelly Coons is in the stands. His taking, daughter taking Kaylin. Taking a break from his from, uh, yeah, volleyball from his travels. His daughter Kaylin's playing for the UCA Sugar Bears. They're having a great season. Marissa misses both, but she gets her own rebound. Looks at Sanaya. Thinks about it. Grove and a man to man. Sanai just takes it herself, gets to the basket off the board, makes it look easy. It's 11 4 Golden Eagles with about a minute 10 left in the first period. Yeah, you can do that, can't you, Van? Yeah, I used to. <laughs> if, if I was playing a bunch of eighth grade girls, I could have. Yeah, I don't know that I ever could have. <laughs> Tina struggles with it a little bit, gets it to Sanaya, who throws it over Lamaya. I think she saw the, uh, the length of. Maya's hair hanging down there made her think she was a lot taller than she really was. That's the second time that's happened. There is going to be an opening. They just got to make sure they connect on that pass. Kind of soft down around the basket. Marissa. Nice, nice position there by Marissa. She gets fouled after she brings down that rebound. She didn't get high in the air, but she did a great job of positioning out, and yep. the body in position. The, uh, that's going to be a foul on the floor. Golden Eagles are going to get it. Prairie Grove looked like Prairie Grove thought they were going to get it back. And they thought about the press, thought better of it. I would too with Sanaya taking it back. Looks like we're going to run a play this time. Off to Tina. Gets back to Sanaya. In the corner, Marissa drives in. Nice job pitching it off. It's not going to count. Nice job by Prairie Grove setting up to take the charge there, but it was a really good job by Marissa on that drive and dish to Lamaya. So that's something to keep in mind this year. We've got some we got some playmakers, some people that can uh, distribute. Coach Carter's got to be happy with that. I mean that's that's a foul issue for Marissa. <laughs> Thirteen seconds left in the first period. Prairie Grove trying to get a basket off. Nice job taking it to the basket there by Hope Kidd, but it doesn't go. And the ball's bouncing around. Sanai gets a hold of it, but the Golden Eagles don't get a shot off. So at the end of the first period, though, Lakeside, with their stifling defense and a few big baskets, lead it 11-4. to Accidents are never planned. But no matter how small every emergency that involves a child is a big deal. It's everything. That's why we're here. Arkansas Children's Northwest offers the only pediatric emergency room in Northwest Arkansas. With fast access, 
pediatric experts, and kid-sized care. Peace of mind when you need it most. And we're back here on the Lakeside Golden Eagle Sports Network. Score is 11 to 4. Lakeside's getting into foul trouble, though. They've got four. They get at least one of those is on Sanaya. We don't have the stats up here with us, so I can't tell you. Lakeside's who's got, got what. Yeah, Lakeside's got four fouls. Prairie Grove's got three. I sort of think Marissa's got two because uh, Coach Carter pulled her there at the end of the first period, and it looks like she's still going to be sitting right now. So I think she's probably got a couple. Well, and I'm the JV announcer, so there's that. We got uh, Blake Leakin down there on the uh, on the camera down on the sideline. We got Rebecca. I never she gets mad at me for never saying her name right, but Malayu is behind me here. She's punching the game for us. And Robbie Leander is on the uh, main Leander. camera. That's Lala Miller with a rebound. She's new to Lakeside this year. Sanaya. Good, Good job there getting it to the right person. Sanaya just took off, got the layup. And the foul. Did Lala come from Ramey? Uh, I think Lala has been at Ramey. She's, uh, I think that's where she was last year. So, uh, in fact, yes, because my little sister goes to Ramey. Or my little sister's daughter goes to Ramey. And uh, they play volleyball together there at Ramey Lake. Gets the hat trick. It's 14 to 4. This kid brings it back up the court. Lakeside's backed off the press a little bit. Great defense by Lala. Lala is the biggest presence they've had in the post ever, I think. Yeah, she is. They've had tall kids before, but never any that uh, sort of had Lala's athleticism and uh, skill ability. I mean, a lot of times. We've had big girls over the years, but a lot of times when a girl in junior high jumps up to be about 5, 10, 11, they're, they haven't, you know, they're athletically, they're just not that developed yet. <laughs> well, Esther tried. She gets an over-the-back foul. Boys have an entirely new team. Jackson Hallam's coming back. But I think that's the only starter from last year's ninth grade team that'll be Brian on the Walton floor. Will be around. He's, he's back and uh, he's going to play some. Or, oh, from the ninth grade From team. the ninth grade team, yeah. And that's Tina, or Luthie Combs, sorry. Passes to Sanaya, who gets fouled. I think kids apologizing to her rather than talking trash, which is a, you know, a good choice. I wouldn't want to make Sanaya mad. Sanaya should be shooting three. Sanaya's going to get the chance this year to really up her game. She had some really good players playing with her last year. She didn't have to be, she didn't, she wasn't, she didn't have to be the focus of everything last year. And she was just a seventh grader. 12 years old. Yeah. And so she's really, she's grown a lot. She's gotten stronger. She's a lot tougher minded than she was a year ago. And uh, this year, she's going to be the one that people know they have to stop. And so she's going to really get a chance to grow as a player this year. And I know she's played a lot of basketball. I know she's playing some AAU, some travel ball. Um, so she has played a lot of basketball. She's a gym rat. She's been in the gym all year. She took up volleyball this year and was a great player on the ninth grade volleyball. She's a stud, yeah. She's just a natural athlete. Number 32, uh, Valerie Medeiros comes in for Prairie Grove. Kid goes out. Kid is starting to get in foul trouble a little bit.
Ducks and Travel? Yeah, I think it's going to say that it's Travel on, on La La. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Ayana. But uh, I think her brother goes by La La, right? Yes. Okay. We're going to confuse that a lot tonight. Yes, we are. And he's playing in the next game. But yeah, I think what happened there is Mr. X was the official. I think he anticipated a little bit. Because if. You got if a foul. Ayana had held on to the ball, she would have traveled. But I think she never quite got possession. But either way, we've had another foul now on Prairie Grove that's a line. Did you see who that was on? I saw a two and a three, so I'm guessing it's going to be Sanaya when that's at least her second. Well, I can't even tell who's shooting because ponytails get in the way of the numbers on uniforms. But you know what? At least we can see these uniforms, unlike the, the black, and gold, r black and reds we did for the last football game. Yeah. Sanaya with a crossover. Drives to the middle. Beautiful move through. Lala with the rebound. Yeah, yeah, we're going to screw this up all night. I, okay, I am going to screw this up all night. Yeah. Because I'll be calling La La Ya Ya because I see her all the time, not him. Anyway, Ayana Miller is at the line to shoot. She's going to get a couple shots. You know, in the, in the regional tournament last year, particularly with Farmington, who had some size, one of the places where Lakeside really struggled was in the post. And I think Yaya is going to be a big difference maker this year for the Golden Eagles. I mean, uh, over the last few years, our tallest players, last couple of years, have been players like Sanaya yep. and the Hudson ladies who, who are shorter than I am. Well, they're basketball players, though. What, yeah. what I mean is they weren't, they didn't play as big men, you know what I mean? They were they were guards. Sanaya's a guard. She's not going to be a presence inside, but she's going to be out handling the ball. Yaya's just straight up. Like, she's not making contact, but... She is an impediment to that ball going up. Marissa's in there grinding. And Prairie Grove just can't get one to drop. They had a lot of rebounds there. It just wasn't going. The shot doesn't go there. Tina gets it, goes back out to Cannon. Now, judging by the fact that Cannon's come off the bench and just been firing a few times, I think we can probably say, safely say that she's somebody that Angel and Isabel. Angel come talk and Isabel Vera coming in. Yaya goes out and Anaya went out. So it's 16 4, 340 to play in the first half. Anaya gets another hand on the ball. And Prairie Grove's really looking to get it to the high post to sort of isolate and try to go to the basket. Tina with a good effort getting a hand in there and just knocking that ball out. Like, she didn't have a chance at the rebound, but just handsy. Quick. She's pretty quick. You better be when you're her height. Angel doing a good job keeping her hands up. She gets the rebound. Nice job, Sanaya, snapping that away. It almost got stolen. Cannon goes over past to Tina, and she like, she's thinking, oh, yeah, that's Tina. I probably should have shot that. <laughs> A little bit lower, a little bit lower. <laughs> Tia smiled and high-fived her. No hard feelings. The girls are enjoying playing together tonight. A lot of energy in the gym tonight, both from the girls, from the boys. There's oh yeah, the fans are big student it. presence. Everybody's ready for this game tonight. And there's Sanaya with another two. And we are 18-4, to four, Golden Eagles with... A little more than two and a half minutes left in the in the half. Eighteen to six. And that's the first point Prairie Grove has scored this quarter. Peyton Spatz with that again. They're trying. To, I think they're just trying to get it to to, uh, to the high post area against that lakeside zone. Nice job there by looks like number fourteen Emerson Rooley reaching in there and tying up. Marissa's going in. Cannon's going out. Perry Grove's got the alternating possession this time. And again, Lakeside's been in that half court trap. Sanaya with a good job. Just smothers the ball. She's just really tough up there. I mean, it's. 
it's hard when you're a normal sized person up there playing guard uh -huh. in your high girls basketball game to have Sonia's arms all around you. So, uh, but again, what Prairie Grove's trying to do is get it down low, and they do. They get it down on baseline there. Shot doesn't go again. And Sonia's fighting the resistance coming up the sideline there. She's going to get bumped and fouled. And that's Madero's number 32. She seems to be somebody that's just going to stick on Sanaya. Well, I'll tell you this. There's a fine ladies' basketball tradition at Prairie Grove. And by the time they get to school and start handling the basketball, they, they make them, they're tough. They're, there's not going to be any give up in a Prairie Grove lady tiger. Or a tiger, for that matter. We'll find that out in the next game. Marissa Brown doesn't play with those jump balls. They're learning. They're learning. <laughs> Mr. Eckwood's giving him some uh, instruction down there. <laughs> As Marissa drives in. Nice job there. That's Marissa. a beautiful effort. Left hand. There's that left handed. Great oh, job, yeah. Tina. Tina got her hand Getting up it. there. The ball actually went off the Prairie Grove player. I don't think the official saw that. Didn't it look like it went off 32? It absolutely did, Van. Minute 24 left. Yaya again gets a chance to take it. Steps down there, so Golden Eagles going to get it back. Yaya, though, she does a really good job of keeping her position. Mm -hmm. She doesn't when she's she's not going for the blocks. She uh, she gets up there, gets her hands in and makes them shoot over her. That's Madero's with a steal. And a travel. She doesn't like that call. She can't pick the ball up and try to go again. Minute five to play, 22-6, Lakeside. Marissa having a little trouble with it there. Again, really being hassled there by Emerson Rudolph. Great pass by Sanaya. Yaya's back out. Sanaya's at the top for three, and it is 25 to 6 with 42 seconds left. Golden Eagles not getting the boards right now. 25 to 8. Tina with a fake. Madero's is tacky. Like, she's just sticking to Sanaya. Great defense. Sanaya to the basket. It's no good. That's the end of the first half. The Golden Eagles going to take a 17 point lead into the locker room, 25 to 8, as we go into halftime. We're going to take a break here. We'll be back with the second half of action here on the Lakeside Golden Eagles. Hey Northwest Arkansas, Lara here at Sam's Furniture. If you're looking for new furniture, we have over 170,000 square feet selection at everyday low prices and same day delivery available. But the best part is that we love to serve our community. So when you buy at Sam's, part of your purchase goes to support one of the many amazing organizations that we have been blessed to partner with. Serving others, especially those in need, is our culture here. And we hope that you'll be a part of that too. Arkansas's largest furniture destination, get it at Sam's. During the Great Depression, nothing came easy. 
But with just five cents, an old truck, and a load of hay, John Tyson and his family found a way to deliver quality chicken to other hardworking people. Today, Tyson continues to find new ways to help put a chicken in every pot because people deserve farm-raised chicken of the highest quality. At Tyson, we remain committed to this simple promise, to always keep it real, to always keep it Tyson. Our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge means you'll find less waiting where it matters most. Faster care in the emergency room. The 30 minutes or less ER service pledge at Northwest Health System, Bentonville and Springdale. And we're back here on the Lakeside Golden Eagle Sports Network. The score is 25 to 8 as we begin the second half of play. Lakeside looked good, kind of picked up where they left off. Sanaya's doing things that Sanaya can do, and us mere mortals can't. Marissa looks good. I think Yaya is going to be a big deal to the Golden Eagles this year. Esther's had a great game. So has Angel. Angel's working really hard down the paint. We'll get started here in just a minute. Here at the Hartzell Jones Gymnasium.
We are back. And Mr. Stuman is now joining me. Well, I just saw Coach Carter's mom down there. I said, did she tell him to rebound at halftime? She said she better have. <laughs> we'll see how they come out. Nice job again there, uh, Peyton Spatz. She's been their offense tonight for uh, Prairie Grove. She gets the ball high post and something happens for her. Angel a little off on the – actually, that wasn't Angel. That was Esther a little off with the three. Prairie Grove's off on the run. Angel almost with a rebound, gets it back to Tina. But Prairie being Grove's slow. got a little momentum. I mean, they've come out on fire. they got only got one basket so far, but – they're the ones that are dictating the action right now. Here's Sanaya. She's going to be called for the charge. I don't like that call. I think, you know, the charge was fine, but you've got uh, Medeiros that's just riding Sanaya's back that we didn't call. We've got to take care of our players, well, I, I even if they are the better than everybody on the court. Lakeside right now is a little bit out of sorts. I think they came out here and expected it to be easy like it was in the first half, and Prairie Grove is not having it. They've come out ready. They've come out ready to play. And there's Medeiros with the travel. She's great on defense. She has struggled a little bit on the offensive well, the side of the ball today. Prairie Grove's had several tra several traveling calls tonight. They've had a few times where they just kind of make that move before the before the foot's uh, or actually make that move with the foot uh, before the ball goes down. <laughs> Have you seen the clip of uh, Zion Williamson and the kid, the little one? There's a kid that's, you know, Zion's seven foot tall, grown man, and there's a kid that's, I don't know, maybe five and a half foot tall, buck twenty soaking wet, that's guarding him, and is just sticking to Zion like glue. Uh, it's a great, well, I, great I, hustle. Medeiros reminds me of that. I mean, I she's working hard. When I was seventeen, I guarantee you, I would have thought I could cover Zion. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take much to put him out for six months or so, does it? I mean, then he blows out a shoe, so. Medeiros is giving great effort on defense. It's good to see. It's Marissa Brown gets the bucket, 26 to 10. She's got a kind bounce on that one. Golden Eagle's back in that trap. They're going to try to trap half court here. Sanaya just slaps it away. I thought they were in man-to-man -man last time down. I was gonna, I was anxious to see if <coughs> that's what they want to keep doing. It may be after misses, they do man and then doing the trap after a make. I haven't really noticed a pattern yet. You got a jump ball. Possession eagle goes to Prairie Grove. And they confirm that that is right. Another Golden jump ball. Back, 26 to 10. Sanaya's going to take her time. Last time it was kind of a one on one challenge with Medeiros. As Marissa drives in and she gets two. That's the second time she's been down, gotten fouled. Prairie Grove already has a couple of fouls in the half. like Olivia Cannon and Esther Livewood are going to come in for Lakeside. Marissa misses the first one. Actually, Olivia's, Olivia's coming in for Esther. Oh, excuse me. Foul on the floor. Third team foul for Prairie Grove.
did a good job splitting. She had two girls set up for charge right there. She did a nice job splitting them. She is not happy about that. It doesn't go off of a lady tiger. I saw it pointed that way. Oh, it's pointed that way, and it's giving a chase to mine. So this is going to be the trap. Marissa kind of got caught looking at the camera there. Marissa with the rebound. Nice job. Protecting the ball. Gets it out to Sanaya. Madero is hustling down after. Gets it out to Olivia Cannon. Prairie Grove has come out a lot more aggressive this half. Maya Martin with a rebound, gets it to Esther. Esther brings it down the court, watches the back. We've got a charge. Kids picked up a lot. Uh, yeah, Esther's confused. I wasn't sure. Oh, no, we don't got a charge. They called the foul on Kid. Fantastic. You know it happens. Coach Carter's not happy. We'll win it until the sun sets. I'm going to take the timeout. Tina throws it up for three. A little too much on it. And they're back in the press with Marissa. But she can, she can hit a free throw with it. 27 to 12. Lakeside's in the lead. Lamaya gets the first. Marissa gets the second. I think that's just being an athlete, Van. Being a competitor, right? Lamaya floats down there to get the pass. Marissa airballs it. Nice save by Esther, but it's picked off by Prairie Grove. And we've got a travel. Kid just kind of falls down.
Yes. That wasn't Madero's. That was number 14, Emerson Ruley, on the defense. Got a lakeside foul, I think, on Esther. She makes it, 27-13. And I think Angel Kumtok's going to come in for Esther. Yep. Olivia Cannon with a rebound. Throws it up, 34. Peyton Dugan recovers. Marissa Brown gets it back. Number 22, Isabel Vera, goes up again. Marissa fighting hard down there for the ball. She is fast. She gets called for the foul. And Coach Carter. And she's go she's going out. I'm not sure what foul that is, but I would be shocked if she's not in foul trouble. Sanaya just a fly swatter up there. Forty-five seconds left in the quarter. And we've got a travel. Number 33, Ivy Sparkman with the travel. Forty seconds left. And they are just going to play Sanaya close. They're going to put somebody on Sanaya and, and just tell them to stick with her. It's Maderos, it's Martinez now, and just not giving her any room to breathe. Trying to deny her the ball. Yeah. What, what, what they've done is they've gotten a taller player on her now. Martinez is a lot taller than Maderos. But it's playing in much the same way. Seven, six, Charlotte, oh good lord, that was just ridiculous. <laughs> Golden Eagles going to take a 29 to 13 lead into the fourth period, so we're going to take a break. We'll be back right here at Marshall Jones Gymnasium on Lakeside Golden Eagles Sports Network. <laughs> we're 
The Springdale Chamber of Commerce is among the top 1% of chambers in the nation to be honored with a five-star rating by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. We work each day to make our members more profitable through programming and events that strengthen our economy, help to create jobs for a growing population, and support the needs of a diverse community. We make Springdale a better place to live. Learn more about the Chamber and Springdale by visiting our website, springdale.com. Hometown. That word still means something here. It means we're neighbors. We do the right thing. We care about your family. And you deserve the very best every time you walk in the front door. Harps. Hometown fresh. And we're back here on the Lakeside Golden Eagle Sports Network. Scores 29 to 13. Start of the fourth quarter. Golden Eagles extend their halftime lead by one. It was pretty even half. Golden Eagles with a lot of turnovers. It was kind of out of sorts last period. Let's see what it looks like now. Stein looking inside for Yaya, who's got her man pinned. Jump ball, like sides. No. Great hands by Tina and Angel. Yeah. Nice yep. job picking up the trash there by Ever Struly. Yep. Get that, that uh, ball going right in the basket with the layup. Felt Not like losing contain. What's that? Losing contain. When an end loses contain, as yep. Yaya came up for the ball. Nice job, Yaya, with the putback right there. They bit prior and actually was going to try to go down low to her. Martinez is on her, hacking her. Goes to Yaya, who gets the jump ball, with battles with number 44, Addison Gardner. Kind of feels like Coach Carter said, let's get the ball inside to Yaya. And, and get her some and, work. And, but it feels like also she's not making sure she's getting the work that she really needs to be doing. And right now they're just kind of tossing up there. And uh, so let her get her body in position to have the work done that she wants. We got to travel. Tina ran into Luthy. Causing a bit of a travel. Luthy goes out. Marissa comes in. And one. She's been asking for that all night. I think one of the things Sanaya needs to learn is just how to how to turn it on and take over a game. And I think we might be hopefully seeing that. She's been pestered all night by Maderos and Martinez. I'm sitting here trying to figure out how many points she's got. I'm thinking we've got to find a way to communicate with the uh, with the scoreboard down there. Yep. Sinks that one, 34 to 15. About four minutes, four minutes, 15 seconds or so left in the in the game. This is the biggest lead for Golden Eagles yet. Here's a steal by Marissa. Here comes a dribble up, gets rid of it. Esper with it off to Sanai, back inside, dumps it off to Yaya, but again, the ball's just not in a really good place for her to handle it. That's two things. That's 
going where it's going to fall for her, but it's also her getting herself in getting position. Into position. And she's a lot of times she's pissed off just kind of standing there, leaning on somebody. She's got to get herself in position to make sure that she gets her point across. Yeah. Make it really clear what she wants to have. She does a good job, Don't such a good job of calling out the foul. Because so many young players want to want to swat the ball. Straight up and down. And they Good defense by Lakeside. And we we have a timeout. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to commercial as we take the timeout. We'll be right back here on the Lakeside Golden Eagles Sports Network. You can love where you live and play at an apartment community managed by Lindsay Management Company. Affordable apartments with awesome amenities, including clubhouses, fitness center, pools, tennis and basketball courts, and playgrounds at select locations. Many locations also include golf privileges, business centers, game rooms, tanning beds, whirlpools, saunas, and resort-style swimming pools. View rates, photos, and apply online at lindsaymanagement.com. And we're back here on the Lakeside Golden Eagle Sports Network. That was a full timeout, so we've still got 30 or so seconds left. Maybe a little less. We're a little slow. We're learning. All of us are here learning. Score is 34 to 15 in favor of Lakeside. It's been an interesting game. Lakeside came out with a dominant first half. Had a pretty even third quarter. Uh, Lakeside came out flat. Prairie Grove came out real aggressively. As we take down the final seconds of the timeout. There we go. Yeah, yeah, with a good job on defense. And Medeiros sinks the two, 34-17. Yeah, somebody didn't do their job right there. He was wide open. High post area. Esther loses the ball. But it Lakeside retains possession. We got a little foul. Yeah, yeah, is going to be taken one and one. Taken two. Misses the first. But gets her own rebound. And gets that, gets her two anyways. Yaya's got good hands. She can move the ball around fast. 36 17, Lakeside. Marissa May has just got number four. Let's see how many is that. Yeah, that's four. That's what it is. Defense, we 
Ross and Sammy. And Prairie Grove, good effort to keep the ball in. Marissa Brown with the rebound. And they miss another one of those hard passes down to the floor. As the referee pushes the cheerleaders' cheers out of the way. Good work by Esther. Good work by Esther. <laughs> Marissa strips Medeiros as she goes up. Medeiros is going to get the foul. Yeah, she's gotten a lot of, a lot of folks work. Sinai has played, I mean, the most, but she's also your best player. I think it's safe to say at this point that it's pretty we're going to win. This is a situation where coach is going to empty the bench, but uh, pretty much everybody's played tonight. And I think if you're Coach Carter, it's, it's kind of the best, best of both worlds. You win, and you win in dominant fashion, but you've also got a lot to work on. You've got some fouls. You've got pos some positioning to clean up. you got some passing to make sure you work on, make sure we catch passes. I love that Prairie Grove's still working hard. Great effort by Sanaya. She scores on the layup. 45 seconds left. <coughs> Martinez takes it down. Sanaya is going to slowly bring it back and probably end the game on this possession. Good effort by Lakeside. 
They're going to end up winning 40 to 17, 42 to 17. Zester drives in. Ten seconds left, still hustling. Jump ball, and that goes Prairie Grove. Lots of subs on this. Yaya's coming in. Esther's coming in. Number 55, Madeline Bartholomew's coming in for Prairie Grove. Number 20, Mattingly Allison's coming in. Number 22, sorry, number 12, Melinda Newman. And that's going to end the game. Lakeside wins it 40-17. to 17. Stick around. We've got another game coming up right after this. Our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge means faster care. And because we're full service hospitals, a lot more care if you need it. Less waiting, faster care. At Northwest Health System, Bentonville and Springdale. Nothing says game day like good friends and great food. And at Slim Chickens, we know great food. From our 100% all-natural chicken dinners, fresh-made wings served with house sauces, to delicious chicken sandwiches, crisp salads, southern sides, and desserts you just can't get anywhere else. At Slim's, we have the food you love, made fresh for the people you care about. Dine in, drive through, or order online. Slim Chickens. Fresh, delicious chicken. Choose the Wellness Centers at Springdale Schools. The Wellness Centers in Springdale are perfect for students and teachers. Teachers can go during their planning period and parents don't have to miss work for students to receive medical care. Offering sports physicals, kindergarten physicals, vaccinations, well child checks, acute care, and more. Wellness Centers are located at a school near you. Wellness Centers and Springdale Schools, we are your medical home. For over 20 years, Community Clinic has served Washington County with quality and affordable health care. With three wellness centers in Springdale, located at Jones, George, and Elmdale Elementary, our services include primary care, pediatrics, prenatal, behavioral health, and physical therapy. We offer services in English, Spanish, and Marcellese so that we can help your family. The Community Clinic. Healthy people. Healthy community. On the counter. Find a hole. Garrett inside the five. Touch! Down Springdale.
And here we go to kick off the season for the Lakeside Junior High boys. And this is a brand new Lakeside team. And I don't have rosters, but I'm going to do my best to give you the Lakeside starting lineup. And number one, a ninth grader, Kenyon Thomas. Number four, guard, Jackson Hallam. Number five, Lala. La. Number 12, Jacoby Miller. And in the post, number 24, Trenton Sizemore. And the Golden Eagles are coached by Coach Jason George and assisted by Coach Logan Brown. This is a brand new look for the Lakeside Golden Eagles. Jackson was here last year and played up for the ninth graders. Trenton played for the eighth graders. But Jacoby, Lala, and Kenyon have all transferred in. They're new to Lakeside this year. We're excited to see what this looks like with the new look Golden Eagles. Kenyon's going to take the tip. Let's get some basketball going. Prairie Grove wants a tip off. Kenyon with a steal in the post. Down to Jacoby. Looks like he might think about it. No, he's going to take it all the way. Jackson with a rebound. Lala goes up and gets fouled. Lala is an athlete. I remember Coach George telling me that he could jump through the roof. So excited to see what he can do. He's not much taller than Jackson. He can do some things athletically that not a lot of kids can do as he misses the first one in and out. Gets the second one, Lakeside's on the board first, one to nothing, Lakeside. Jacoby picks him up at half court. Lala sticks his hand in there. An aggressive zone as Prairie Grove hits the three. I think we'll get there eventually. It's our first game, too. Hey, I'm just glad we're not doing the uh, possession arrow. I mean, that's kind of normal for people at your age, right? You wake up, <laughs> you got to figure out what your name is. Oh, I know that. I got my wife's screen. <laughs> Everything else I have to figure out. Still 3-1 to one, as Titus Tustin takes it down. Cole McGar at the top. Lala doing good work. Kenya gets it down to Jackson. Takes it in. All tied up at three. Jason George. Yeah, Jazz Carter was his coach. It's 
it's different Van Steuben, <laughs> right? Jackson's going to take it down. Gets the charge. I saw the official thing. He's going to say, wait, should I call out the charge? Ah, good job by, uh, good job by clearing the world of this set off here. Take another three. Craig Grove with a rebound, but Kenya takes from Jax. It's going to bring it down the court. Gets stuffed, but Jacoby gets it. Up to Kenyon at the top. Kenyon through traffic, and he's going to get fouled. I can see the Golden Eagles have some guys that can get to the basket this year. They're doing it against a 2-3 zone with a bunch of guys that know what they're doing, know how to protect the basket. Trenton Sizemore is going to take it out underneath for the Golden Eagles. Fight for it down there. and Looks like Kenyon fought just about one second too long. He's going to be called for the foul. 3-3, three three, game's tied up with 3.51 left to play in the first period. Nice job, Jacoby, with a steal. He gets it himself. Pulls it out a little bit, goes back to the basket, hits Ya or Lala on the drive. Can't get the basket to go though, and it's going to go out of bounds. This is a much more athletic team than we saw last year. I think they're still learning how to play together a little bit. Yep, there's a little bit of that. There's, you got three guys in the starting lineup here who, who are new to Lakeside. <coughs> Great effort. Boy, Lala got in the air there. Blocks it out of bounds. Lala's quick, and he can get up in the air. Basket's no good. Lala gets up, gets that rebound on the air ball. Turns nice spin move. Jackson gets in the corner three. to Jackson. Three Stop. is good. Lakeside up six to three. I think that's what we're going to be looking for this year, Jamie. Lots of speed, lots of quick movement. At that moment right there, I just saw your eyes light up <laughs> and start thinking, oh, this might be fun this season. Yeah, did you see that block by Kenyon? <laughs> yeah, I did. I think this might be an enjoyable season as La La tries not to hit his head on the backboard. Goodness, this is going to be fun. Both boys and girls, I think. And a five-second call right there. Good defense by the Golden Eagles. Kobe thinks Kobe about thinking it. about it. Again for the travel. Yeah, he, he thought about the shot. Then he thought about the drive. And then only after he thought about the drive did he think about putting the ball on the ground. I've gotten that look from Jacoby a few times in <laughs> class. I know what he's thinking. And he's thinking he has no idea what that official's saying. Well, we've got video for him. And Jacoby's yeah. going to get the foul. He's not, really, he's not really liking that call either, though. But he did. He got a little aggressive, got a little close, got a little bump there. Got a few of these guys in class. And i got to tell you, there's a great off the court, great kids. And Coach George got a, has, a, has a very good athletic team, but he's also got a kid. Got some high-character players. There's As Lala La just La La. comes over and gets another block over Jackson's head. 
Well, we had just now checking in for the Golden Eagle, Eagles, uh, number 14, A.P. Anderson. Lala thinks about drifting over. AP gets it to Jackson. Great spin move by Jackson. Kicks it out to Trenton, who thinks about shooting. Drives in for the layup. No goal. I think he's going to say Trenton touched, Kenyon touched the rim, so no shot. Kenyon, Kenyon touched the rim. He did not grab the rim. But that's probably a good time to get that call. Maybe that'll stick with Trent or uh, with uh, Kenyon, and that won't happen again. Now, Ben, is that a junior high rule, or is that no, a high, no, no, is that no. a, a high no, school rule? He's going to say it. Uh, it somehow had an impact on the shot. He's calling it offensive goaltending. Uh, I don't like that call at all. AP loses the ball. Not happy with himself. That's the second mistake he's made, but he knows it. He'll make it up. Six three still in favor of Lakeside. Lala's gonna get called for the foul. And, and Golden Eagles are in some foul trouble. That's their fifth foul already with 144 to go in the first period. That's Brian Urano that's coming in. Actually, that's not Brian. I'm, I'm I just didn't noticing. Think it was. I'm just noticing that uh, Brian. I'm gonna see what number Brian has on. I'm guessing whoever. I'm going to guess this young man. Maybe Jordan Anderson. That's a name I don't it's, recognize. It's and I don't recognize him. Well, there's a nice shot right there by Kellen Cash. Six to five. Golden Eagles still with the lead. Facing that 2-3 zone down there. Jackson sneaks into the corner. Y'all yeah, yeah, doing a nice job getting to the basket. Again, he's so quick, and he gets up so high. He's not real tall, but I'm wondering if that's not coming because he's got some pretty long arms and legs. Lakeside working good on defense, knocking the ball out. It's number 22, Tobin Munson, subbing in for the Prairie Grove Tigers. Kenya's got several boards down there tonight. He's really clearing them. He's looking to go to the basket now. He's going to get fouled. It looks like they're going to say he got fouled on the floor before the shot. He lost the ball as he was going for the shot. I think he got fouled before then. They're going to say it's going out of bounds. Number five, Kristen Hall coming in for uh, Blake Cougren, Cochran. As Trenton Sizemore takes it out, gets it out to La La. And Jackson takes control. Golden Eagles trying to spread it out a little bit here. 20 seconds. Looks like they're going for the last shot of the period. Jackson drives, dishes out to Canyon. I guess they're not going for the last shot of the period. Prairie Grove's going to get the last shot. Nine seconds left. Down to the corner. Three's no good. Kenyon with the rebound. They're looking to get it out. One second. Jackson's Jackson going to take it from half court. court. Just misses. So at the end of one, Golden Eagles lead it 6-5 to five in an up-and-down, fast and furious game. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back here in a little bit on the Lakeside Golden Eagles Sports Network. Come see the largest pre-owned inventory in Northwest Arkansas. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it in McClarty Daniel Country. With 800 pre-owned vehicles at six giant locations in Bentonville and Springdale, there's something for everyone. Plus, at McClarty Daniel, you're protected. Drive worry-free for seven years or 200,000 miles with the MD pre-owned advantage. And when it's time to sell your car, we're ready to buy it, even if you don't buy from us. Have you visited McClarty Daniel Country yet? Visit us online at McClartyDaniel.com.
Welcome back, Rebecca. You got to tell us, man. We're back, okay? We're back here on the Lakeside Golden Eagle Sports Network at the Hartzell Jones Gymnasium. Lakeside leads 6-5 at the start of the second quarter. Van, what do you think so far of the, the new look, Lakeside Golden Eagles? Well, we've got quickness. I think we've got, well, we know Jackson's a shooter. It still remains to be seen how the other guys look handling the ball or shooting. Uh, defensively, we're going to be pretty good with that quickness. we just got to see how they all mesh. Right now, they're just coming out of the gate. They're just flying so hard to get to the basket offensively. They've just been a little out of sorts. Now, Prairie Grove going for the trap. Did a good job there uh, hanging on to it. Golden Eagles, listen, you know, they're trying to learn to play at full speed. Nice baseline <laughs> drive by Kenyon right there. Really nice. And you know what was impressive to me? A lot of junior high kids won't do this. You come down that baseline, you've got to square your body up with the basket right there and protect the ball. And Kenyon did that. That was a really, really nice use of his body underneath. Jacoby's coming in. Eight to five. Don't have the missing the points. Well, it should be it should be at nine to five at this point. There we go. Kenya did a good job of completing the three point play. Great nice job steal, right there. Trenton Sizemore. He's gonna take it on. No, he's not. He thought about it. Nice job there. He he was in a good position as the Prairie Grove player made their spin move down there. Lakeside's still going to have it. Went off a Prairie Grove, Prairie Grove player. Well, you got to get the ball there, Kenyon. When you're ha when you're facing these zones, you got to move the ball, but then you got to find gaps. And right now, it feels like they're kind of forcing it in there. Nice. nice job by Lala getting that rebound and putting it back up. It feels like we've done a little, we've rushed a little bit, taking it inside, and I think the Golden Eagles could stand to work it a little bit longer, and they're going to find more openings in there if they, because they're quick, they can penetrate, but you don't want to do it too early in a possession. You want to get that, get the ball back and forth a couple of times from side to side, get that defense out of position, and that's when you look for it. Nice job getting it in there to Jackson, although. Good job by Prairie Grove. Reacting to the ball. About to get a, that was a good play. Who nice close that? out there by Kellen Cash. Jackson baseline. Kicks it out to Kenyon on the right wing. Three's no good. Prairie Grove looks good. Like Lakeside's a good team. And I think we're going to see that going forward. But Prairie Grove's giving them all they want. Well, Cash is a player. He looks like Larry Bird out there. They got a lot of size, a lot of length, decent athleticism. They're doing a good job with that zone. They've been looking for that. They've been looking to hit that high post, which get it inside against that zone. It really helps. Nice job again, Kenyon. Makes that baseline move, turn, spin around, turn or turn around jumper there. Got it to go. 13 to nine, Lakeside. 3.28 to play in the first half. And stops a little bit of a run by Prairie Grove. Again, nice job there. That was Cole McGarr. 13-11, Golden Eagles with the lead. Prairie Grove hanging in there. I guarantee you, Golden Eagles, you know, uh, we're not going to play a lot of 2-3 zone. And so we haven't seen much of this here in practice. And I, I know Coach George knew it was coming, but it's hard to recreate it against a team that really plays it well. Prairie Grove with a big substitution right here. It looks like they're bringing all five in, aren't they? And it looks like we're going to have a timeout. That's a 30-second timeout, but it's going to be a 60-second timeout because uh, scorekeeper hit the uh, timeout timer. So we might as well take a break here. 
We'll be right back in a little bit on the Lakeside Golden Eagle Sports <laughs> Network. seconds left this in the first half. Lakeside ball. Kenya takes that shot. A little short. Out the front of the rim. Great nice job, job Jacoby getting up Kobe. there. And we're going to get a foul. Well, Jacoby already had one. He comes in and gets another quick one. I think he might have had two. That might be his third foul. Unless, unless they call that on Jackson, I'm not sure. But I do know this. The Tigers are into bonus. It's Titus Tustin that's going to be taking them. Lala gets up there again. Jackson's going to the rack. A little too much on yeah, it. Yeah, too much, too much on it right there. I just get the feeling the Golden Eagles are just come out a little bit, a little bit excited, a little, little bit anxious. Yeah. Nice job right there, Good getting to the rack. Control. I mean, Good that was a great out. job handling that pass and getting it to the basket. And Jacoby gets the block. And avoids the foul. Yeah, he, he didn't get he didn't rotate back defensively, and he was probably about to get in trouble for that. He comes up and gets the block from behind. Is he jacks up a three? The back of the rim. And a nice job down there. That was Robert Von, Von Bergen. Prairie Grove. Grove ties it up. Minute 26 still in the first half. Kenyon drives in. Lala with quick hands. Jacoby thinks about it. Jackson's going to get nailed for three points seconds in the lane. I thought that was a little bit of a quick whistle there on that. You know, if this comes down to a one-point game, they're going to remember that shot that Trenton made earlier got taken away. Mm -hmm. Quick hands by Jackson. Good rebound by Jacoby. Is going to get fouled, I think. And that should, I believe that will put the Golden Eagles in the bonus. Unless that is, no, that's just number, number six. All right. 45 seconds left in the half. Jackson thinks about it. Goes out to Kenyon. Got to keep that thing moving. Look to penetrate those gaps. There you go. That's how you find open shots right there. 30 seconds to play in the half. Trenton's going to take that three. In Rims out. in and out. 20 seconds left. Prairie Grove's going to get a chance to take the lead here going into half. Loose ball. Kind of bouncing around there. Trenton jumping on it. Jackson's got it. Trying to get rid of it, though. Gets, throws, throws it back to Prairie Grove for the last second shot. It doesn't go, and so we're going to go to halftime tied at 13. Very active, exciting game. Lots of uh, up and down going on here. We're going to take a break. 
We'll be back here after halftime with the second half of tonight's game from Lakeside Junior High. You're listening to the Lakeside Golden Eagles Sports Network. Come see the largest pre-owned inventory in Northwest Arkansas. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it in McClarty Daniel Country. With 800 pre-owned vehicles at six giant locations in Bentonville and Springdale, there's something for everyone. Plus, at McClarty Daniel, you're protected. Drive worry-free for seven years or 200,000 miles with the MD pre-owned advantage. And when it's time to sell your car, we're ready to buy it, even if you don't buy from us. Have you visited McClarty Daniel Country yet? Visit us online at McClartyDaniel.com. Ballpark Franks got their start in 1957, right here in the ballpark. And with the taste of 100% Angus beef, passed down from one generation to the next, they soon became a tradition everywhere, bringing on the feeling of summer in every bite. Ballpark Franks, bring on summer.
And we're back here on the Lakeside Golden Eagle Sports Network. Thanks for sticking with us. We've got a tie game going into the second half. Prairie Grove's ball. And lots of nerves, I think. Lots of athleticism. Lots of work for the Lakeside Golden Eagles. But they're just not getting shots to fall. They had a little bit of trouble penetrating into the zone. Prairie Grove misses Lala with the rebound. And he is just sprinting down the court. Jackson Hallam probably gets fouled, but we missed that. Trent Sizemore two on one. And they miss it. Jackson with the gets the turnover. Goes up. They're going to call it on the floor, I believe. Or they're going to give it to him. They're going to call it on the floor. No, they're not. They're going to give Jackson the in one. So Jackson starts the half off with two points. Sinks it. It's going to be 16-13. Five and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah, Jackson with a nice job there. We were I was down there by his dad and his his uh, trainer and Treshawn, and he just missed that, that little layup right before then, and they were complaining, griping at him. <laughs> As they should. Down Jackson, they weren't complaining and griping at you. They were they were frustrated it didn't go too, just like you were. Kenyon does a good job of getting his arms up, and they have to shoot all the way over Kenyon as it goes off the top of the backboard. Jacoby thinks about the shot, passes it over to Lala. Up to Kenyon. Back over to Jackson, who takes the three. In and out. He's going to get his share of those this year. Jackson is the floor general. You see Jackson directing Jacoby where to go. Lala with an incredibly athletic play. Kenyon loses the ball. Jackson hustling down. But number two, Cole McGar makes it anyways. 16-15 in favor of Lakeside. Over to Jacoby, over to Jackson. Back to Kenyon. Ben, what did you think of the first half? What went well, what didn't, what can we do better? Well, what went well was just we were very athletic and we got some got some stuff out of that. But we're kind of getting back into some of the same traps we did in the first half of not really being precise with what we're doing offensively. Uh, in fact, I felt like we were moving the ball better in the first half than we are right now. Like that that like last possession was really was kind of sloppy. Where, you know, Jacoby's up top, Kenyon's over here on the right wing, and Jackson on the left wing, and the three of them were just kind of throwing the ball between them. Uh, earlier on, Jacoby makes that pass, and he kind of cuts through. We replace it, you know, we place open spots. We keep the ball moving from side to side. Then we find an open gap and penetrate it, and felt like we, we weren't really uh, – felt like there wasn't much purpose in that last possession. Do you think that's just, you know, first game playing together jitters? Oh, the gel a little that's, bit? That's junior high kids. <laughs> Fair enough. It goes out. It's going to remain Prairie Grove ball. As Cochran missed both of those shots. Lala with <laughs> Lala's just such a good athlete. He's just so quick. And he anticipates, too. It's not just that he's athletic. He, he uh, has a great sense of where the ball's going. Yeah, Lala's going to be playing some high school ball, maybe later this year. Get another three-second call there. I didn't see, didn't see who was in the lane, but there's Lala again. Good travel. Yep. Yep, he got in there. And, uh, that's Von Bergen. He got in there and drug the pivot foot. Nice, good job by Gold, the Golden Eagles being in, uh, just in the right position. Good help with each other down there.
Kenyon in position for the rebound there, fighting for it, but it went off his hand out of bounds. Golden Eagles are a little, they're a little frustrated about uh, some of these shots that aren't going for them. They're getting some shots that I think they feel like are easy shots, the shots they're looking for, and they're just not going. And there's uh, Brian Rano getting ready to check in. He's got number 22 on, so I'm guessing Brian and Jordan's numbers have been switched on our roster, so I'm guessing 20 was Jordan. Here's Golden Eagles coming back. Jacoby's got it. Nice pass. To nice, Jackson. Jackson. Jackson did a nice job letting the defense pass, but he's got to get that shot in. Doesn't go, and the uh, ball goes off to Golden Eagles. Prairie Grove's got it. Again, little things like that are what's really, really frustrating Lakeside right now. They just can't get the ball to fall. Coach George is going to take a 30 right here. And we didn't hit the 30-second, the 60-second timer. Yep. They're, uh, 16 to 15 still. They're, uh, I think he, he's, he got Brian in just now. And uh, Brian hasn't played yet tonight. He was the guy that started for the eighth grade team last year. And uh, so he's going to get his chance here. Looks like he's got something drawn up he wants to do. I, I, I'm assuming that's something offensively that he wants to do, even though they're going to be on defense here first. They've just got to get the ball to start falling. Uh, what can happen, though, is you, you get frustrated. You start pressing. And uh, by, I don't mean defensively pressing. I mean you just kind of start pushing a little too hard offensively instead of letting the openings just kind of come there. Anyway. Oh, I see what they're doing. They're going to press now. Let's see how that goes. Looks like it's a. Well, I think one, Lakeside two, needs one, to do one. something. They've got the athletic ability to do it. Yeah, they've got some some hands and hands and feet out there that can cause some disruption. And this is this is. I'm interested to see how Lakeside plays this half. I know one of the problems we had last year was we just didn't finish games. Nice shot right there. That's Cole McGar again. Uh, I, but what I think what Lakeside's trying to do there, rather than necessarily get the get the steal, what they made Prairie Grove do is rush and take a bad shot, which they did. It happened. Problem was Prairie Grove got the rebound, and that's where they got that open shot. Again, just kind of sloppy with the ball. And there's Isaac Moss with the basket. Prairie Grove and the Tigers take a 19 to 16 lead just like that suddenly they've got it Golden Eagles haven't scored in a while 130 left to play in the third quarter and uh, if they're not careful Brian's going to get a three second call in there Jacoby doesn't get the three to go Jackson's fighting hard for the rebound it's not there and here's Prairie Grove with a little run out and they get another easy two Blake Coughlin. 21 to 16 in favor of Prairie Grove. And Prairie Grove has come out hot. Lakeside's been a little frustrated, been a little sloppy with the ball. Nice job by Brian getting that rebound. He steps on the line. Yaya just, he just took it. I mean, Lala took it, got there inside. Got inside there and got the shot again. We're getting those little shots that just aren't falling. It's one of those nights right now. Again, Coach George trying to change the pace a little bit, see if that doesn't favor his team. You put a, you put a team in the first game in a hostile gym against this kind of athleticism, it can cause us some problems. Kenyon's going to get a foul right there. 41 seconds left in the third. That's the first foul of the half for Lakeside. That is one uh, positive here. Yeah, it's been a very There's difficult steal. quarter. Brian gets it. Gets it to Lala. He's going to go all the way. Beautiful. There's your basket. 18-21. About 30 seconds left. Prairie Grove gets the basket again. Nice job again by Prairie Grove. That press is not slowing them down. Golden Eagles trying to press. 
It's leaving them vulnerable in the back. 17 seconds. And Lala's going to get fouled down there. Trying to go baseline. Blake Cochran trying to get down there and cut him off. Golden Eagles going to have the ball. Baseline inbounds. Third team foul for Prairie Grove. 14 seconds left. Savannah, you think they're going to hold on to the ball here, try to take the last shot? Well, maybe I thought they three? were going to do that at the end of the yeah. first and at the end of the second, and it didn't happen, so we'll see. And <laughs> it doesn't happen again, but Kenyon hits a beautiful three. Well, he hits that three, and that helps a lot. 21-23. What you don't want to do is give Prairie Grove a shot here. Three seconds, two. They act like they're just not sure. I think, looked to me like Kellen Cash just was not aware of the time that was left on the clock, so... Golden Eagles, 21, close it back with, uh, within two there. And uh, so we're going to go uh, and see us a barn burner this last six minutes. Let's take a break. We'll be back here on the Lakeside. Try the three and three meal at Slim Chickens. Three hand-breaded chicken tenders paired with three perfectly fried wings. Shaken in your choice of house flavors. Served with fries, Texas toast, and a medium drink. Slim Chickens, fresh, delicious chicken. Hi, I'm Madeline Sisenasi, and today I want to speak about our school culture and community. We've all heard of See Something, Say Something. It's out in the hallway, on the back of your ID, and in your classrooms, but what does it really mean? See Say is a way for students to anonymously and confidentially share their experiences or concerns. As the largest school district in the state, we have a lot of kiddos. Every student should know how to reach out and report a safety concern. The CSA form is everywhere. You can access it on the top left of every Spring Duck computer via SPS links, scan the QR code posted in the halls, access it on your school website, or go to go.sdale.org forward slash CSA. We have the voice and power to influence our district as a whole. We can create a district that we're all proud to be a part of. Do your part, and when you see something, say something. We're back here at Lakeside Junior High Hartsville Jones Gymnasium for tonight's game. It's 21 or 23-21, Prairie Grove in the lead, and we're joined here by Lakeside Assistant Principal, former eighth grade basketball coach here, former Shiloh Saint in high school, Joel Lookadoo. Hey, Vans, good to be up here. Well, we've seen an exciting game so far. The Golden Eagles just haven't really put it all together yet. They got a chance here to tie it back up or take a lead. They've been seeing this 2-3 zone all night and have had trouble penetrating it here lately. Had a lot of trouble in the third quarter. You know, and even when they've had some chances in there, they've been close. Just had not been able to quite finish some. And that time, I thought I thought they were going to give – Trenton got a charge earlier in the game. Looked like I really thought they were going to give him – one right there, but they call the foul on Prairie Grove on the floor. So Lakeside's going to have a baseline inbounds play here. They just they 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 worked the ball a lot better in the first half against the two three than they have in the second. Now Kenyon just says I'm taking it, and again there's one of those shots that just doesn't go. Trenton gets it though and puts it in. That helps tie game. Golden Eagles back back even, and they're going to be putting that pressure on. Problem with his zone lately has been. They've gotten behind us. And there he goes again. Getting the basket. There's they Jacoby. Got the turnover. He just pulls it away from Cogran. Now he's trying to get control of it. Kenyon's got it. Back to Jacoby him. Kobe wants it in the corner. He wants that three. Nice job on this, the skip pass to Jackson. But again, the Golden Eagles just holding it a long time, trying to get it to the basket instead of working it. Now Jackson's call for a travel there, Joel. I didn't see. I, I didn't see that one I either. He was dribbling that ball until he. I mean, he picked it up and threw it immediately. Look, I don't look. know how that was travel. Look, but again, look. I feel like I feel like we're I feel like we're not being very patient, and we're not making that zone move and looking for gaps. I just hadn't quite found the way to figure that out yet. Um, you know, been tight all night. Well. I, we, we have found out some things about the Golden Eagles tonight, though. We have found that we've got some athletes out there on the court. There's no doubt about that. They are fun to watch, and they are, you know, they're quick. Uh, they can jump. But it's This is a fun, fun team to watch. And how about this crowd tonight, too? I oh, mean, yeah, it, it's we've got a great crowd tonight. And I, I think we're going to find that the Golden Eagles are a better shooting team than what we're seeing tonight. 
I mean, uh, Jackson Hallam's hit one three. Kenyon's hit one three. Uh, but I feel like those guys are going to be pretty dependable shooters most games. I think so, too. You know, first game coming out, there's always some jitters. There's always – got to get that first one behind you. Um, well, you it's know. tough, too. You know that you know that we are not a zone team. And we're coming out here playing a, playing a team that's in a 2-3 and doing a good job of it. And when you haven't seen that and you're playing that in your first game, it's, it's tough because there's a lot of nuance to get a good shot off against a good team. Uh, playing zone defense. There's that press. It's paid off there. Oh, it did for a second. Jacoby's really working it, but he's also he's also gotten himself in some foul trouble here too. So we'll see. I thought that my I thought he maybe had four before there. I guess he just had three. Yeah, I really like this pressure though. They're now getting what the they want. There's the guy you don't want to throw the ball to as anybody that that's around Lala. No way. He is, you know, he's going to be playing above the rim uh, here soon, and it's it's fun. He looks like a guy who's going to grow a little bit too. But right now, he he is just an amazing athlete. Oh, looks like we've got a timeout here. So Prairie Grove's taking a timeout. It's a full timeout, so we'll take a break with him. 4.43 to play in the game. Tied at 23 here at Lakeside. You are watching the Lakeside Golden Eagles Sports Network. Try the three and three meal at Slim Chickens. Three hand breaded chicken tenders paired with three perfectly fried wings, shaken in your choice of house flavors. Served with fries, Texas toast, and a medium drink. Slim Chickens, fresh, delicious chicken. We're back here at Lakeside Junior High, 443 to play, and we've got a barn burner. Man, how did, scoring game. how'd it feel to uh, commentate with somebody that actually knows the game of basketball? Well, someday, good. someday maybe you'll have that, e <laughs> that, e that experience. I don't know. I can never be Joel looking at it. That's a, those are big shoes to fill. Well, Golden Eagles are, again, they, they're frustrated by uh, some what they feel like I think are some easy shots they've missed. Had a few turnovers, and I think a lot of the turnovers are caused by just rushing, wanting to wanting to get it done. I think this team knows that they're athletic. They know that they're going to be more athletic than just about everybody and they there's play. There's a demonstration of it right Case there. Case in point. Jackson gets his Case easy shot, in and the, point. And the uh, Golden Eagles are going to take their first lead here since they lost it in the third. And there's a turnover as Prairie Grove steps over the line on the inbounds. And the press is really, the, the, last, the last minute or so, that press has really yeah. made a difference. They've gotten to him a little bit. And now it looks like we're about to have another timeout. Looks like Coach George took this one. And that's a 30-second. We'll stay with you. Not sure. I, I kind of felt like, I'm not sure why he was taking that. He... Uh, Unless there's, unless he wanted to make, I, I'd worried a little bit about maybe he wanted to get Jacoby out because of foul trouble, but he looks like he's got him in there. I can also so, see him one day. You've got the momentum, but they've been playing too fast all game. So maybe there's something to be said for slowing down a little bit, collecting. Let's get a play in. Let's take advantage. Points have not been easy to come by in this game for either team. No. So they taking advantage. Collecting yourself a little bit. Golden Eagles huddling up. They better hurry up and get the ball. Official will set it down on the ground and start counting you. Trenton's taking it out. Jacoby in the corner. It. Again, we've got a cut right there. Coming up with the ball screen up top. Kick it over to Kenyon for the three. It's offline. And Prairie Grove with the rebound. Good Jackson job, strips Jackson it away. Hallam. Gets it to gets it to Trenton. Trenton kicks it out to Lala. And it just didn't quite happen quick enough. Prairie Grove recovered and knocked it out of bounds, but it still goes to the Golden Eagles. Into Lala. You know you can't throw the ball away if you're throwing it to Lala, can you? <laughs> I mean, maybe if you bounce it off the roof. Maybe. I, I don't know. I think he might can get that. 
Kenyon kind of got himself in a little trouble there, got it out to Jackson. And again, look, we're just doing a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, which is not going to suit you against that 2-3 zone. You've got to move the ball. You've got to move the ball. Inside, now, you get that ball inside to Lala, he's going to do something with it. I thought he might have drug his pivot foot down there, but the Golden Eagles take a four-point lead. They're pressing. Good trap. Boy, <laughs> Lala is just quick. Tried to reverse layup, didn't go. Jackson follows it up, though. Gets it go, not sure. I think looks like we've got a foul called, so it looks like it's going to be called on Lala's shot. Or is that going to be an and one? Yeah, I think Lala got hit in the head as yeah, he went okay. up, and ja Jackson took it. So Jackson's follow-up did not count. Lala's going to get two shots right here. I think Lala wanted to dunk right there. That's what I think wanted to happen. Well, I would have liked that a lot myself. 28-23. So can you dunk in junior high basketball? Is that allowed? Could I? I, no. mean, I know you can. I know well, I can. Of course can. it's allowed. But can Lala, as he sinks another 29-23. We've, we've seen plenty of dunks here in this gym over the years. Good effort by Jackson Hallam, by Trenton. Jacoby comes up limping after that. Let him walk it off. He'll be all right. I think what... Golden Eagles now with this six-point lead, three minutes. I think Coach would like to see him kind of pull it out a little bit, see if we can get Prairie Grove out of that zone. Well, The official decides that a ball going off a Prairie Grove pra player still means it's Prairie Grove ball. <laughs> but, you know, what do I know? I'm just up here commentating. There's a reason for that. Well, there is a piece of glass between us and what's happening down there. Maybe we <laughs> saw something wrong. That press is still going there. Kenyon doing a good job putting his body in between the man, slowing him down a little bit. Out to the corner. Nice job cutting off that baseline. Prairie Grove doing a good job getting a good shot inside, but it didn't go. Goes off a of Golden Eagle. So Prairie Grove's going to have it. 2.37 to play. Six-point lead for Lakeside. <laughs> I got the sense in the last offensive possession the coach wanted to kind of pull it out a little bit and try to get Prairie Grove out of that zone. But uh, then we kind of got impatient with it and got to rushing. Lakeside so ball. Looks like, yeah, it looks like Prairie Grove turns it over right there. There was kind of a scramble for the ball, and it looks like it went off one of the Prairie Grove guys. Kobe's still limping, but he's going to gut it out. So it looks like. They're going to a 1-3-1 one, one trap. Got a whistle down here. Not sure what it was. I don't think we started the clock. Okay. Well, I, if I'm Prairie Grove, I'm upset because they were about to get themselves a turnover as that whistle was coming on. All right. They're, again, they're, they're going to a 1-3-1 one, one trap now. They're going to try to do something different. Golden Eagles got to stay spread out. You got to get away from each other. Don't get too close. Jacoby doing a nice job of kicking it out. Don't rush it. You don't have to score, Jackson. Nice job by Lala trying to get in there. Gets his hand on it, but goes out of bounds off of him. Still pressing, Golden Eagles are. They've had some success with it, and it's really gotten, it's gotten Lakeside out of We're sorts. We're going to get the travel. Yeah, lost his, kind of lost his feet there and slipped. I'm most surprised we didn't see a timeout there from Prairie Grove. Jackson's going to take it out. Two minutes and eight seconds left in the game. Six-point lead by Lakeside. Got a little sweat on the floor, it looks like. Well, if there wasn't before, there is now after <laughs> the last stumble down there. Again, Lakeside, they've got to... They've got to be a little bit more careful about when to shoot. You've got a six-point lead with two minutes left, and you've got a team that's getting desperate defensively. If you're patient, you can get wide-open layups. But again, when you're dealing with junior high kids, it's a whole different story. 
And that was not a bad plan right there. Ooh, that's a nice steal there by Mr. Lala, and he's going to be called for a charge. Are you kidding me? He doesn't like that. Well, nobody does except for uh, our visitors in black and gold. All right, so Lakeside's going to press, and it looks like looks like timeout taken by Prairie Grove, so <laughs> we'll take a timeout, too, with 2.02 to play, 29-23 Lakeside. We'll be right back on the Lakeside Golden Eagle Sports Network. We'll be all right. And we're back here on the Lakeside Gold, Golden Eagle Sports Network. Two minutes left. Prairie Grove ball. If they can get it in. And they do. Lakeside still in the trap. What? Uh, okay. Offensive foul called on uh, number Titus 10. Tustin. I was it 10? I guess he, it was number one. I guess he's called. Tried to call it a push off. Uh, I, I'll be honest. I didn't see that. There was a. There wasn't a lot of space when Jackson came through. Again, against this trap, you want to reverse the ball out of there. Now, or, one way of reversing the ball over there is just to go around them. Or do that. That works, too. Lakeside with their biggest lead of the night, 31-23. Minute and a half left. And Three Lakeside no needs good. to just slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down. I don't know that they can hear me. Or just take your three. That works, too. 34-23. <laughs> Minute eight to play. And, and they're not fouling. Trenton gets it. Oh, Jackson just. And Jackson just knows so it. Much Jackson knows it. He's just having so much trouble getting it to fall tonight. But Jackson's a great player. And that's, that's not going to keep happening. 48 seconds. Prairie Grove takes a timeout. They've just gotten back within. Uh, is, has Prairie Grove's points gone up yet? Is that uh, right? 34-25. Tw uh, I think okay. that is right. So it is a nine-point lead yeah. still. I got a little – I got I got uh, sidetracked there. There was a lot of scoring that happened. So three-possession ball game. What do you what do you do if you're Prairie Grove? Are you fouling the whole time, well, jacking yeah, up threes? Well, yeah, you got to foul immediately. For one thing, Prairie Grove's got six fouls now, so the next foul is one and one. You want to put Lakeside at the line as quickly as you can. If you're Lakeside, you want to try to play keep away as much as possible, play keep away with it. Or if you got a – you got a ball handler who you really trust who can also hit those free throws. You just make sure that guy's got the ball in his hands. But uh, the best thing is to have five guys out there that can handle the ball <laughs> and shoot free throws and can play keep away. It helps if they're all 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, you just throw over the other team's head. Or just throw it up and let Lala <laughs> fly over everybody else to get it. You could do that. Well, the Golden Eagles are going to have it. They're going to get pressed right here. So I guess the first thing you got to do is make sure you got your press offense ready to go. This is the first time Prairie Grove has pressed full court. And Trenton is still in the game. And he's your kind of your post player. Your quarterback, so to speak, huh? Something like that. Nice Scobie job gets a good Joe press Kobe. break. Beautiful. That's one way that to break well the press done. right there. Good job by everybody. Good positioning, good passing. And Travel. Trenton knocks it down, and they cause a turnover. 35 seconds, Lakeside up by 13. Prairie Grove's making sure they get all their shooters in. 
But right now they're getting all their foulers in. Jackson's got it, trying to get it out of there. Had a swarm around him. 25 seconds. Jackson with the rebound. Fights through getting hit in the face. They're going to have to have a pretty hard foul before it's going to get called right here. Beautiful play. Like that one? Yep. Yep. I think at this point it's, it's safe to say Lakeside's going to I'm not going to say it, but I'm feeling pretty good about this. And this is a this is a With much 12 seconds in a 13 point lead. You think that's pretty safe? I'm a Razorback fan, Van. I never say a lead safe. Never expect good things to happen either. Abe Lemons once got multiple technical fouls in a row, <laughs> and a team had about a 10 point play on him. So even that's not enough tonight, though. You got a lane violation? I think. Oh, I think we maybe had a player that fouled out. Yep. And so he needed to be off the court before the shot was taken. So this is a very different team than last year. And, I, I, and what, I was, what I was anxious to see this game, I knew they were going to be athletic. Just seeing the kids walk down the hall, you know they're going to be athletic. I was interested to see how they, how they came out in the second half and what happened when they get hit, got hit in the mouth. And, and they did. They got hit in the mouth in the third quarter, and they came back, and they stormed back. Lakeside went on a run in that fourth quarter, and they've looked good. They are very athletic. I think they're much better shooters than what we're seeing tonight, too. I think there's a lot of first-game jitters. I think there's a lot of and kids not playing together, trying to figure each other out still, yeah. and just big crowd. And what a, what a great crowd for a junior high basketball game, right? In both sides, there's a lot of Prairie Grove fans, a lot of Lakeside fans. It's been fun. Well, everybody's excited about the first game of the season, too. So it's only going to get better. We'll be streaming all the home games this year except for one, and it should be available to you, too. Probably might be better because there won't be announcers for that one. Yeah, you certainly won't miss me. <laughs> Can you miss is the first? Golden Eagles traveling to Siloam Springs next week for three games. For the Siloam Tournament. The tournament. It's uh, always a great start to tell you know it's basketball season. We'll be back here in a few weeks. It'll be into December before we're back with you. But we'll be back for the Central game. I don't know the date off the top of my head. We're down to five seconds left. Here's Lala. He's going to take Lala a chance and a dunk. <laughs> Didn't go. Didn't go, but the Golden Eagles win it. 38-25. They pull it out. And a nice first game against a pretty good opponent here. And a... Uh, Coach George has got to feel good about what he's got this year. Jamie, enjoyed it. Thank you to Blake and Robbie and Rebecca, who did a great job tonight as your, uh, as your film crew. And we'll be back here in a few weeks when the Golden Eagles take on the Central Warriors. Have a good evening and uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody.